Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. South Dakota Public Broadcasting, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is South Dakota Public Broadcasting. How do you hear me? South Dakota Public Broadcasting, we hear you loud and clear, and welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. Mike Fossum, Ron Guerin, Satoshi Furukawa, greetings from the state of South Dakota. Welcome to Dakota Midday. Well, thank you, Paul. It's good, it's good to be on the show. Mike Fossum, you are the South Dakota native. Uh, how are you and the other astronauts doing? How are you and the other astronauts doing? We're doing great. Uh, it's busy up here, and I, I know that you've heard some of the things that are going on, so we're in the, in the process of running a, a lot of the science that's up here, as well as trying to get Ronnie packed up to go home in a week and a half or so. We have been hearing that the International Space Station may have to fly solo this fall, that all of the astronauts may have to leave the station in late November if Russian spacecrafts can't make trips to the station a Russian supply ship that's uh, similar to what's used to launch astronauts was destroyed during liftoff last week. Uh, Mike Fossum, what do you know and what does it mean for you? Well, what it means uh, for both Satoshi and me, uh, Ron's, Ron's uh, been up here for five and a half months, pushing six months. And when he leaves in uh, two weeks, that'll be a week later than normal. They had about a week delay as we considered actually keeping them up here until the end of October and then decided against it. Uh, so Satoshi and I will be here. We were planned to go home in the middle of November. That When we uh, launched in June, that was the plans. And that's currently the plans that we, uh, we hope to get home in uh, mid-November. Uh, they are, or the Russian uh, space agency is working through the problems that they had with the Soyuz booster. That same booster is used for the cargo ship that uh, that uh, failed to reach orbit or crashed, if you will, a week ago. That and it's all it's used for launching humans. We all rode up on that uh, on that you know very very similar booster. So the new crews are are currently won't will not be coming up immediately to the space station until they get this problem sorted out. They're working hard on it. They have some insight. They had a lot of data uh, from the uh, from the rocket during the uh, engine shutdown. So they're working it, and it's possible that, I mean, we will be here with just three people, certainly for a while, for a month or two months. Uh, with a little luck, they will uh, find the problems, and our you know, next crew will join us up here for a couple, about uh, one to two weeks of handover before we leave and go home. How concerned are you that the experiments you are involved in could, could be lost or compromised in some way? There is that possibility. A lot of the data are transmitted to the ground as we're doing the testing up here, so the, the, there is no loss, if you will. The samples don't need to go home. Some of the samples do need to go home, and I'm confident we'll get them there eventually. If we have to uh, leave here in November or, or sometime this winter without a replacement crew on board, it's possible the crew could be without, or the space station could be without a crew on board for a period of time. Uh, there is some elevated risk associated with that, not to humans, of course, but to our you know, investment here to the station itself. Without people to help keep things running, uh, there is a chance that, that something could happen which would be really detrimental. Uh, but those, those kind of stretches, you know, especially for a shorter period of time, you know, it's not that severe. Uh, I certain, uh, don't believe that this is going to be a long-term problem. The, the Russians have a lot of experience with this particular rocket, um, many, many years and hundreds of launches. And I think they're going to figure this out, and we're going to get back on the road soon. Mike, you are a flight engineer for this current expedition, Expedition 28. You're scheduled to take over as commander later this month for Expedition 29. Uh, how excited are you to take over as commander? 
I am excited. It's the, to to live and work up here has been a dream since since childhood, really. And uh, I was involved at NASA when the space station program was was uh, you know first being worked on in the early '80s and announced by the president in '84. And I've had the chance to work on the the redesigned team in the '90s and and uh, then help build it on two shuttle missions. Now, to me, it's just mind-boggling to have the opportunity to to not, not just live here, but then be in charge up here to take command. It's an awesome responsibility. The uh, the hopes and visions of of many nations around the world, particularly the 15 partners that contributed to the space station program, are riding on the continued success. And it's uh, my responsibility, really our responsibility, to uh, keep it running. Ron Guerin, uh, what are some of the experiments and research you're currently doing? Well, that, that uh, would actually take a long time to answer that question. We've got quite a few experiments going on. You know, over the, over the course of the last 10 years that we've been operating the space station uh, with humans on board, we've conducted over 600 experiments. But we've got everything uh, from fluid physics experiments, uh, uh, materials. Um, uh, Mike and Satoshi just got Robonaut out, uh, our seventh crew member. Uh, so we've got a lot of robotics experiments going on. We've got uh, experiments studying the human body, um, so the experiments designed uh, to hopefully develop new medicines, new materials, uh, safer, cleaner energy. Uh, the list goes on and on. This is a, an incredible orbiting research facility, and we are making the, the most out of it. And I think it's a, really a, going to prove to be a very tremendous uh, investment in our future. Uh, Ron, you were a mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Uh, you previously visited the station as an STS-124 mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Discovery in June of 2008. How would you describe life aboard the International Space Station as the post-shuttle era begins? Well, um, that's also an interesting question because, you know, I, all of us on board uh, right now got to see that transition from when we went from const the construction phase, when the construction phase ended, to the pure utilization phase uh, started to kick off. And, uh, you know, there really was a, a definite uh, transition that the science really ramped up. You know, with six of us on board, we, that affords us the opportunity to do a lot more science. Uh, and that's in addition to all the autonomous science that, that goes on whether we're here or not. There's there's still a great deal of that as well, and so you know it was it was a little bittersweet seeing the uh, shuttle leave for the last time. You know, you know, marking the end of that chapter in our history. But uh, you know, we we're all filled with a lot of optimism in our future, and uh, we're hoping that this is going to be a stepping stone to continued exploration. Uh, you know, beyond low Earth orbit, out into the solar system, and, and this is going to be a, a very crucial step in that process. Satoshi Furukawa, you have a medical background, a doctorate in medicine. What can you tell us about how extended life uh, in microgravity if affects human beings? Okay, that is a very good question. Okay, extended life. Okay. Well, six well, months, uh, for example. Well, uh, okay, six months. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, if you do nothing over the six months, uh, you uh, encounter bone mass loss and uh, muscle atrophy. But we uh, exercise every day. Plus, we volunteer to uh, use our own bodies to uh, test the preventive effect of uh, medicine, uh, bisphosphonate, which is a remedy for osteoporosis on the ground. And... Uh, inhibits uh, bone uh, absorption and uh, plus uh, we uh, have radiation uh, about 100 times uh, bigger more than that on the ground so we will get about 100 to 150 milli sievert uh, per six months but uh, we are not worried about that because it is acceptable and uh, the probability of getting a cancer increases about 1%, and I think it is acceptable. We're talking with Mike Fossum, Ron Guerin, Satoshi Furukawa, astronauts on the International Space Station. Mike Fossum, by the time your time on the space station is up in November, you will have been in space for six months. You have a wife and four children and a grandchild. How hard is it to be away from them for all this time? 
I'd say the separation from family is probably the hardest part of this. I'm living my dream, and I say that, and they know that, and they've, they have, my kids have all grown up knowing that it was my dream to do this and to be here right now. Uh, and so that, that really helps. Uh, I am in contact with my family. I talk to family members you know, almost every day. And uh, we have email contact, and every weekend we have the chance for a, a short video conference, you know, with our families. So that that helps stay in touch. Mike, you were born in Sioux Falls. I know you grew up in McAllen, Texas, but uh, born in Sioux Falls. How proud of you are you of your South Dakota roots? Oh, my South Dakota roots go back to the mid 18 1860s when the first fossums showed up as pioneers in that area. Uh, and so I, I just like to think that I'm carrying on that pioneering tradition here, living in an outpost in a, in a really outrageous, far out place. Uh, it's a very different, and in, in, at times the conditions are harsh. It's really not that bad in here, but it's looking for a better future, looking for a better tomorrow. And that's when they, when they came, my ancestors came from Norway and then headed across the United States to the first opportunities that they found. Uh, that's, that's where they stayed. And I have a lot of family that's in the Sioux Falls area and around Canton, South Dakota. And I consider that to be my second hometown. You want to say a quick hello to everybody? Oh, you bet. I actually have family scattered all over the state. Uh, but uh, just to hide everybody, where I, I, I talked to them. They had a big launch party uh, in uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, uh, for, uh, for us, where they watched the uh, video, and the whole family got together there. And uh, things are going great. I can't wait to uh, get back up there and see everybody. Well, Mike Fossum, Ron Garen, Satoshi Furukawa, it's been uh, a pleasure talking with you. Our time is up, but uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to visit with us here on Dakota Midday. We sure appreciate it. Thank you much. It's great talking to you, and this is the International Space Station signing out. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, South Dakota Pub Public Broadcasting Station. Please stand by while we reconfigure video and audio communications.